privilege of being able to listen to Mark talk about how to take your practice to a different level. How wonderful could that be? I mean, does it get any better than that? I'm Jim Healy. I'm the, the director of the continuing education for the Chiropractic Trust. I just want to let you know a little bit about uh, Mark and, and where this trust idea comes from. BJ's last written words had to do with his notion of what chiropractic was and, and you know if you think about it here he is on his deathbed and the most important thing he wants to do is let the world know that there's an expectation to carry it on. There's something bigger than just him and what his life was to it and what your life to it is as well. And he wrote that those things, time will show that those things which serve better mankind will continue on. And chiropractic is included in that. He said, my illustrious father, D.D., passed a trust on to me to keep it unsullied uns and unstained or defamed. And I now pass this on to you to guard as he would have you do. Mark is responsible for bringing to life that trust. When, once you hear him speak, you'll understand how important he takes it and how much it should mean to you to understand that what you do is not just about you. It's not just about your office. It's not just about the people that come to visit you. It's about something that is here to change the world. And I know that you're going to feel that energy when you hear Mark Romano, President of the Trust. Good morning, and I'm so glad that we're all here to share in this experience. The experience that brings us together is our love for chiropractic. And I feel very comfortable in saying, in this room and in this company, that everybody here looks at chiropractic as an entity bigger than themselves. Now, a lot of times, we're, we go to seminar, we go to continuing ed, and we just sit there in the back of the room, we put our earplugs in, we get a good book, and we read. Perhaps today, yes, perhaps today, we can discuss amongst our peers how to better ourselves and better serve our communities. Every one of you is doing amazingly wonderful things, and I'm super excited for us to be together to do this. Let's go back and forth. In my studies of how to apply this amazing principle and how to do so within the realms of quality, safety, and competence, what I found, the thing that I know, is nobody really knows. Everything is up to interpretation. Every law is made by a human. And every law has to be interpreted by another human. In the end, I think we cover ourselves by our passion and our commitment to excellence. So please keep in mind, uh, at the risk of sounding redundant, everybody here simply wants to provide the best service possible to make the biggest difference in their communities that we possibly can. And ultimately make a living at doing so. I want you to make a fabulous living. I want you to make lots and lots and lots of money providing the world with an unbelievable service, bettering the quality of people's lives, and then also utilizing that money to further benefit the lives and the people around you. It's really pretty simple. Sometimes we become so ingrained in a principle and so focused on that principle that we make false assumptions that everybody we deal with is as sincere and honest as we are. And we begin to try to seek approval or validation toward people who don't share the same love, respect, and who really don't care to the level that we do. So please always take into consideration the audience that you have. Now, if you practice in a non-therapeutic model, means you practice in a very philosophically congruent manner and that you have a, a deep passion for what you do. What it does not mean 
It doesn't mean you're going to have a problem with your state board. It does not mean you have to make enemies. It does not mean you have to have comp complications arise. I see people all the time, well, if you're not, I say all the time, I've seen it a few times, somehow that means all the time. If you're not having problems with your state boards, you're not doing things right. I don't agree with that. Things may come up. Adversity comes up. Bumps come up. I've had them come up in my office. And when my board has contacted me, I certainly want to be compliant with my board. And in 22 years of practice, I have a very good relationship with the uh, Board of Chiropractic Examiners in my state. What is the purpose of the Board of Chiropractic Examiners in any state? What is their purpose? Protect the people. Protect the people. So who do they work for? The people. people. The people. Mm -hmm. They're to do one thing, assure quality and safety of the care that you provide to a minimum standard so that you're helping people and not risking people to injury or worse. That's what their job is. So let them do their job. Great. Everything is up for interpretation. Now, many times throughout this presentation, what you're going to hear me say, just don't call up your board and ask them questions about this, that, or the other thing. Anybody can be appointed to the board. It does not make them an expert. They have an opinion just like we have an opinion. Their opinions could drastically differ from yours. You could ask them questions that they've never thought about in their lives. So how can they give you an accurate answer of something you've been thinking about for years and years when they've only thought about it for 20 or 30 seconds? They're just as human as we are. But in that position, let's give them unbelievable respect and let's follow proper channels of protocol. Everyone should have an attorney. Everybody should have an attorney, and your attorney is paid to interpret a law. Is that the end all be all? No, absolutely not, because everything is up for debate. It doesn't matter if it's law of practice through the state board, and it doesn't matter if it's taxes. Most everybody here probably has an accountant, and your accountant is not liable for the mistakes your accountant makes, which is really a pretty great job, you know? Uh, who was it talking, um, Stamati, was it you the other day was talking last night about um, the accountant having issues yeah. and all of a sudden people being, um, you know, audited for back taxes that the accountant mm -hmm. didn't file properly? Right. You know, it was like out of a Seinfeld episode. The, the accountant had some sort of chemical mm -hmm. dependency mm -hmm. just like they did when... Jerry Seinfeld um, had an accountant, and Kramer was accusing him of like having a drug addiction, and Kramer's trying to figure it out. And they're at the bar. <laughs> anyway, the accounting profession does the best that they can. But when they make mistakes, they let you know straight up that this is totally up for interpretation. And even though we have certain deductions here that we're going to go with, some deductions are very conservative. However, other deductions, if you're ever audited by the IRS, will simply not be allowed. Is that uh, against the law? No, you just weren't allowed that, and you've got to pay that money back. You see, what's breaking the law is when you don't file all your taxes, when you don't claim all your income. But to have filed that and not paid is not against the law, you just have to pay the penalties and fees. Chiropractic risk management. I always find that term, I don't know. When you say risk management, one, it doesn't promote excitement throughout the people attending, and two, does it not instill an element of fear? Because how many times, you know, are people so nervous in schools, ladies and gentlemen, they're doing the best that they can. I have accepted the position of the school to get through national and state board. Once you've gotten through national and state boards, now you have the opportunity to learn chiropractic in the model in which you want to practice. Schools do a great job of what they do, but if you look at the big picture, from the three and a half and five years that you're at school, all you're getting is information. Don't even make a decision. Yes, think. If the schools could promote one thing, promote thinking. However, 
Time is of the essence when you're at school. You just don't have a whole lot of time to think. You don't have a whole lot of time to do things uh, that are directly involved with the learning that you're going to experience throughout your career. But you've got to start somewhere. You know, undergrad, what, what are you doing in undergrad? I know B.J. Palmer was very much against any form of undergrad.